predicted. It'll be probably near a three four and probably under three. That's number one. Right. Instead of uh, showing a rise in the next quarter, we'll have 16.4 expenditure of military this quarter, and it'll probably drop to 14 the next quarter. That'll carry us from July through September. Uh, I don't know what this man will do, but they all underestimate Bob McNamara's uh, efficiencies. Uh, you know what he he thinks he's going to do? He thinks he's going to cut back ammunition expenditure orders this year between a billion and two billion. My gracious. Now, he just got bombs running out of his ears because he decided we were going into war, that we were going to lay them flat. Uh, we've had bad weather for two or three months. We haven't used them the extent we thought we would. We got them a lot faster than we thought we would, to the point where we uh, up to 16 point billion something in this quarter. And his best projections next quarter, shoving them as fast as he can, getting it as quick as he can, wanting to get it over with, is just 14 something. So that will be the drop in the next quarter. Now, I, I'm, I'm not much of an economist. I haven't had anything like the wealth of experience these other fellows, but I've told our people from the cables I read, uh, I've just told my friends that I sit around the porch with the Johnson City, the Judge Morsons that don't know much, but I just said, now, boys, don't get anybody on your payroll here you can't live with the next two or three years. Just uh, just tighten up. Let's don't, uh, let's don't go further than you can, uh, you can live with them because I don't want to have a bunch of high-priced people that you can't that you're going to have to let go and cause a lot of bad feelings, so don't get that. Now, number two, you think you're doing pretty good now, and you want to go out, expand all over the place. If I were you, I'd just keep that in the bank. I saw old Herman Brown's only man did any good in Austin, 32, and he was pretty damn liquid, and I'd keep a little watch on that. And uh, number three, every one of these promoters that come in and want to do everything from run a ship on the lake to go out here and add extra uh, a extra capacity right. of this little plant, you just tell them that uh, what's going to happen when some morning Ho Chi Minh comes in and says, uh, I've had enough. Now, we didn't think they'd had enough in Germany, and we didn't think they'd had enough in Tokyo, and we were planning to go in uh, with 100,000 men on the beaches, but we didn't do it. And I'm not going to tell anybody else this, Bill, and I don't put much credence in it. Well, I but before the day was over yesterday, I had the most uh, realistic, the most uh, convincing, the most persuasive peace feeler I've had since I've been president. That was at 3 o'clock yesterday. I, I, I hadn't finished this dinner here with the Prime Minister. They were calling me out on a very urgent call with the Secretary of State and Defense. Now, I don't think it amounts to anything. I'm not a fellow like Adlai Stevenson that uh, gets a drink in a bar and thinks that somebody bowing at him means he wants to surrender. Right. I'm, not, I'm too hard-headed for that. But uh, when I see them do what they did yesterday, the most perfect execution in the history of our military forces, according to the experienced military people, they went in there and they were 300 yards away from Russian ships and everything else, and hell, they didn't even splatter water on them. They just cleared up and flattened out and leveled out the oil refineries and didn't kill any civilians and then got on out and didn't lose but one plane. We figured we'd lose 20. But when we, when we go to doing that, Yesterday, yesterday they had a man in Saigon, and yesterday they had a man in Washington, one talking to the Secretary of State, one talking to our ambassador. Both of them saying that Hanoi had said that here were conditions they'd never offered before. Now, we are analyzing those, and we don't think, I don't think much of them, although the diplomats do, but I, I don't think so. I don't think they've had enough yet, but uh, I don't think that we can forget I'm not going to let my boy Johnson City forget that no. they can wake up some morning and have $12 billion worth of stuff. And I told McNamara, no, no, the damn thing, when you appropriate this money to the generals, they spend it, Bill. 
You do it. You do it. If you've got your bank balance, you've got two hundred thousand dollars cash over there, not earning any interest, anything else. You see a damn pretty boat you like to ride in. Why well, you say, "What the hell? I'm not going to live always." And you buy it. And that's what a general does. That's but if you've right. got to go get the money and you have hell getting it, right? Why well, you just don't do it. Now, that's what's happening. So I think that the, I'm saying to my people. Uh, be cautious, be careful, don't get more people than you can endure if, if things uh, s slow down a little. Don't don't get a lot of stuff started here that you're not going to need when these boys come home. Don't raise too much hell about employees you can't get because you're going to have them running out of years here any day. And if McNamara, by chance, should uh, fool Ho Chi Minh and cut off his oil, flatten out his place, and he should decide that he'd rather listen to Russia than China. Yeah. And he, incidentally, he's supposed to be on his way to Moscow at this moment. Uh, and the Chinese are just having hell inside their outfit. Right. So I think the prudent thing, if we could do it, the wise thing from everybody's standpoint, the, the, would be for our people just not to, to get off of their drunken binge on uh, spending and to just hold things in reserve because we're going to need every damn one of these plants and we're going to need all these public buildings and we're going to need all this highway building and we're going to need everything just as soon as we turn some of these three million boys out of the army. Well, that's right, but we've got a lot of programs uh, that uh, will, that can be uh, speeded up when that happens and the only thing that impressed me in Dirksen yesterday was uh, I think he's probably uh, got something on uh, your being a, a, a friend of austerity at this juncture. Now, you've been right along. That's There's no question about that, but you know how it is in uh, this business better than I do. People forget that very quickly. And at the moment, I think if uh, you could uh, find some way of getting in the position of uh, showing how aware you are of the inflationary threat and how anxious you are to contain it and uh, uh, be a, uh, uh, have that as a posture and say just as soon as this thing is over, well, I'm going to go ahead with uh, a lot of programs uh, that we may have to postpone or phase out at this juncture. It seems to me that there's a good bit to what Dirksen is saying there. Well, I, uh, I'm, uh, I'm for any austerity program that we can put in that'll, uh, keep our budget under what I recommended uh, that uh, anybody up there will support. Right. So you just keep it up, and I appreciate your information. I'll follow through. All right, fine, and have a, I hope you'll get a few days rest. On Tuesday. Ranch. I'm going to. When are you going to Houston? Well, I, I hope to go around the 15th. I'm okay. going to uh, get, get a... Walter Reed? Well, or are you going to Walter Reed? Or? No, I'm going to the medical center. I think. In New York? No, here in uh, Washington. Okay, Bill. Good luck. Fine. Thank you, sir.